Determined to isolate the 300 square miles of Russia's Kursk Oblast southwest of the Seam River, the Ukrainian Army and Air Force struck, in a heady four days starting on Friday, all three permanent bridges across the Seam River in Russia's Kursk Oblast. In order to put the parts of floating pontoon bridges together, Russian engineers mobilized, rushing sections of them to the Seam and launching boats. It was anticipated by the Ukrainians, though, then fired rockets to blow up the boats and pontoons on the water, and then launched explosive first-person view drones to intercept the engineer convoys. As a result, six days into the river operation, a sizable portion of Kursk and any Russian forces stationed there are essentially shut off from reinforcements and overland supplies. Furthermore, Russian helicopters will find it very difficult to refuel from the air over Kursk due to Ukrainian forces. That the Ukrainians are so determined to isolate Kursk Oblast left of the seam is a strong signal that their next move, 15 days into their invasion of Kursk, might be a ground attack across the seam into the same region they just isolated. The first hints Ukraine was targeting bridges in Kursk came on Friday, when imagery appeared online depicting worsening damage, the result of back-to-back -back strikes, to a concrete span across the seam in Glushkovo, nine miles west of the front line of the 500-square-mile invasion zone. The bridge raids marched westward over the next three days. Through Monday, Rockets and bombs hit concrete spans in Zavano and Karaj, badly damaging or destroying each. With the raid on the bridge in Karaj on Monday, the Russians no longer had any easy way of getting vehicles into Kursk Oblast southwest of the scene. So they deployed engineering units with pontoons and boats, scrutinizing satellite imagery. Radio Free Europe correspondent Mark Krutov identified the construction of at least three pontoon bridges. But if Krutov could see the floating bridges, Ukrainian intelligence could see them, too. Ukrainian FPV drones intercepted some of the bridging units while they were still on the road. Drones pinpointed other units as they were craning or floating the pontoon sections into place. Perhaps most dramatically, M30 31st's rockets fired by the Ukrainian Army's US-made high-mobility artillery rocket system peppered one of the pontoons with hundreds of grenade-sized bomblets. The attacks continued into Monday, with Ukrainian forces, striking pontoon bridges and engineering equipment in the western part of their operational zone in the Glushkovo district, the Ukrainian Center for Defense Strategies reported. Ukrainian troops aim to outpace the enemy in the operational deployment of forces in this direction, according to CDs. The destruction of bridges is the key. The Russians no longer have any easy way into that part of Kursk, but the Ukrainians can enter the area by crossing the border. Given a safer air defense environment, the Russians might just resupply and reinforce their troops between the seam and the border with helicopters. But the Ukrainians have effectively cleared the air over Kursk, firing surface-to-air missiles and deploying FPV drones as aerial rams, Ukrainian forces have downed several Russian helicopters in Kursk since the invasion kicked off on August 6. Meanwhile, in a speech to mark Independence Day in the capital Kyiv, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky stressed his country's resolve to regain its territorial integrity. Russian President Vladimir Putin received an update from top army generals at an undisclosed command center about strategies to counter Ukrainian forces that invaded the Kursk region earlier this month. 
No details were released about what was discussed. But the Kremlin said that Putin also listened to telephone updates from commanders of the troop groups involved in the full-scale invasion of Ukraine on the operational situation in the areas entrusted to them. Ukraine launched the surprise offensive into Kursk on 6 August, with Kyiv later saying the incursion aimed to create a buffer zone to prevent further attacks from Russia on Ukrainian territory. In a speech marking Independence Day in the capital, Kyiv, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky stressed his country's resolve to regain its territorial integrity. We will do everything to force Putin to end this war diplomatically, so that there will be less loss of people in front of everything and time. But if we do not succeed, if our partners crumble and do not stand firmly against Putin's aggression and against him as a thief, then we will do everything so that our army is ready to justly push Putin out of the territory of our state," he said. Following a briefing from Kohler Genie Alexander Sersky, a top military commander, Zelensky traveled close to the area of Ukraine's recent incursion into Russia, but stopped short of crossing the border, an act that would likely have been seen by Moscow as a direct provocation. He reiterated that Ukraine does not intend to occupy Russian territory permanently but wants to create a buffer zone to prevent further attacks into his country. The operation, which began on Ogmar 6, has reportedly led to a significant decrease in Russian shelling and civilian casualties in the Sumy region, the Associated Press reported. Ukraine's incursion into Russian territory marks the first such capture since World War II, underscoring the conflict's escalating intensity. Both sides have increasingly relied on drone warfare to strike deep within enemy lines. Здорово, да.